Okay, first time video. Here goes nothing. Never done one before. So, figure I'll start with my most popular one. I get asked a lot. It's the uh, the Smalley Shad. It's just a five inch bait fish pattern that moves like hell. So, here we go. It's a, uh, this is a Fire Hole 811, number four. I like the barbless rear hooks. I do a lot of a lot of fishing for largemouth. If they choke it, I can get it out without trying to kill them. So, run it back to about right there. And then just do a little bit of polar flash, like three or four strands, whatever it is. Bend it over, cut it in half. You don't need a lot. I don't. I don't run anything underneath my tails on these for support because they aren't long enough. I don't really, I don't want anything restricting the movement. They're not really going to whip around and get hung up or anything like that. Three or four wraps, fold it over, a couple wraps, fingernail, kind of move it around a little bit. Tie it down. About all the flash you need. Farms American Rooster Saddle. We're gonna do a Fire Tiger one since I got one. I need to do for an order anyway. Let's try to get a matching pair. About that long. And pretty much you're gonna make it. I don't know, what would that be? About two shank lengths long where the, where the feather. a few loose tie-ins until I get them sitting exactly where I want them and wrap it back and cut that crap off and this is a garden I guess that's how you pronounce it. It's 150. You can use whatever. That don't really matter. Oh, now we're going to come in with some medium cactus chenille. This is pearl. I mean, again, whatever. You can use whatever you want. No rules. I'm going to do six wraps forward. Try to do as close as touching wraps as you can. This will act as support for the next step, which will be Palmer Marabou, but also it'll help with the taper of the fly in the end when you see kind of how it gets built up. Just some Marabou. I like the blood quills the best. They seem to have the better, better marabou in it for palmering. The normal bag stuff usually, if you're making covers or whatever, they're great. But to to palmer with, they're not the best. Pull just a few back. Get that stem tied in. And we're going to wrap it forward. 
usually get about five or six reps out of this as well. absolute mess at first but we'll run a comb through it kind of straighten it all out okay and just in front of that we're going to spin up a little bit of deer belly hair uh, being fire tiger I'll do chartreuse in the back and then orange up on the front section I mean, you just pinch you off a good little piece, half a pencil. I mean, whatever, whatever half a pencil is. Pull the junk out. If you've got any super long ones in, go ahead and... I like pulling those out too, because I'm not going to stack this. I want it to kind of go a little bit everywhere, but, you know, somewhat symmetrical. You end up with about a shank length's worth, maybe a little less. Trim it off. Spin your thread, make sure it's good and tight. A couple loose wraps. And then just spin it up. If it doesn't go exactly where you want, you can always do the little pinch method just kind of get it around and we're just going to tie all these butts off if you got some long ones you can get in there with scissors and trim them down but it's really not that big a deal because we're going to come up here and we're going to cover all that with laser dub and back section doesn't take a whole lot just kind of picture when you hold it in your hand, about the size, maybe a little bit more than your, your bobbin tube for the bottom section. I'll do a little bit more. And just kind of pull it apart, stack them up, make sure it's somewhat even. And just kind of loosely grab it, about 50-50. Kind of put my fingernail into it. I just got to somewhat get it spread evenly around the bottom side of the hook. And then we'll come in with some, just some regular olive. And you're almost going, we're going to put on almost twice as much as what we did on the bottom, but not quite. Being the back section, we don't, don't need a whole lot. I want it to kind of move move freely same thing 50 50 put my fingernail in it hold it pull it. thread tight so it doesn't roll i'm gonna tie that off quick whip finish I pretty much do this on on all my streamers the uh, solar is ultra bone dry just to kind of help protect the threads and hold everything in place make sure it don't got none in the eye
and we'll just comb it out. And usually what I do on just about any dubbing head, <coughs> anything that gets finished off of dubbing, I love this stuff. Nobody talks about it anymore. I don't know how many people actually still use it. Softex is the shit. Softex is where it's at. Just use a, a bodkin, just kind of get a little bit, just to spread it through on the nose. And basically what it does, it'll help hold its shape. But uh, at the same time, it allows the back half of the, uh, most of the, the dubbing and that still move and still flow. But all this up front will hold, hold its shape. Just like that. I'm gonna set it over off to the side for about five or 10 minutes. Let that dry. If I'm doing a bunch, I'll just knock out a bunch of tail sections. And we'll just move on to the front. Front's a B10S size one. And just like the back, you can use whatever you want. I just really like that, that B10S quite a bit. Especially when we're talking about small mouth, large mouth. It's fine for trout and all that stuff too if you want to pinch your barbs over or whatever. But use whatever you want. Same goes for connecting wire. Whether it's intruder wire or if you like beetle line or whatever. Just whatever you got. And we're going to tie that off at about, leaving about, say, the front third. Wrap it back, come back up. And you can use the six millimeter beads if you want. To me, they're a little overkill for for this side of the pattern, I just use medium glass beads. Use three of them. Just use the chartreuse one in this, this scenario. Put our tail section back on. up to about the third point fold it over and you don't have to fold it over if you don't want to I do it just kind of gives me a uh, a bit of a reference point of where I need to stop my marabou and get ready to spin more belly hair out in front of that flush cuts cut that off Hold that straight. Just wrap back. Once we get back to the end, I like to go down the shank just a little bit. But I like to wrap the holy crap out of it back there. Because what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take that same bone dry and I'm going to coat right there where the thread ends and the wire begins just to kind of help protect it so that wire doesn't eat into the threads and start breaking it and chewing it out. Just helps make it last just a little bit longer. Pretty much what we did on the back section. We're 
going to do cactus chenille there, but we're going to step up to the large size. I got the chartreuse version here. Basically wrap it to where it just starts to go, where the shank starts to bend down. And with the large, we're only going to do five wraps. Again, try to keep them as, as close as you possibly can. Now, instead of going straight to the marabou, just to kind of help the flare and help the push and all that good stuff, we're going to come in with a little filler flash. After I kind of figured it out on this pattern, I, I kind of do this on a lot of them, on, on a lot of dubbing head streamers that I do. Just stack that cactus chenille in with filler flash. You get a nice little water push out of it with almost no water retention. So it's it works really good. And we'll just do five wraps again. Again, as close as you can get them. Okay, now we'll palm on some more marimbu. Bring that back just to, just enough to where you can start getting into the, into the longer feathers. Trim that tip off, get it out of the way. Sure that filler flash stays back out of your way run it up and it basically be the same thing four five six seven like what however many turns you can you think you can fit in there on the front section kind of the more the merrier but you don't want to uh you want to put so many on there that it, it cuts yourself short because instead of a single top and bottom stack like we did on the bottom, we're going to double it up. So you're going to end up with two top stacks and two bottom stacks. So you got to make sure you leave yourself some, some wiggle room for that. And that's probably good enough. back tie it off in front of it clip off that junk pretty much do the same as we did on the back run the comb through it make sure there's nothing really trapped kind of evens them all out okay we're going to come in with some more belly hair Pretty much about the same. We'll put in a little more in the front than we did in the back. Say a full pencil. Do the same thing. Pull the extra long ones out. Comb the junk out. Again, I mean, this would be, since the front shank's a little bit longer, it won't be, say, a full shank length. 
say two thirds of a shank. It'll be about the same pinch as you did in the back. So once I tie that down, I'll come in with a pair of scissors, trim the long stuff out so we can get it all tied down. Clean all this up. Alright. We'll do our first stacks of laser dev again. Chartreuse on the bottom, olive on the top. And pretty much how we'll do this is how I figure it is. The bottom, first bottom stack on this is be about the same size as the top stack on the rear. Basically just say double the size of your bobbin tube. Just for a reference. Fingernail, move it around. And we're gonna come in with olive again on the top. But this time even even more. This will be a very healthy chunk worth of dubbing. So pretty much twice as much as that. Line it. Tear it apart, line them all up, make sure it's nice and even. You're gonna dub that much. Again, we're going to do 50-50 because we're going to do another stack in front of it anyway. That, peel it back. Come up, pull that back, hold them both back at the same time. And basically build a thread dam in front of those just to kind of pinch it all off. And before we go any further, I, since I do a double double dubbing head if that's what you want to call it i like to comb this section out first it makes it a lot easier when you get ready to go to go finish it off you're not trying to pull through you know four sections of dubbing at one time you've already got this one pretty much combed out and you can kind of see just by that was the way that Cactus chenille and filler flash, how it, just, it gives it that bulbous look. To where back here with just the cactus chenille, it just it tapers it down. All right, now we're gonna come in with just some just some hairline rooster saddle. Just make some lateral lines. You don't have to have them in if you don't want. Or I just like these because they're a little bit stiffer. Basically, just for aesthetics. It doesn't, they don't really do a whole lot. And we're going to come back almost to where our marabou tips are. I know it's hard to see it here. But once we do, I'll do this side first. That way you'll be able to see it. Get tied down, clip the excess crap off. But you can see here about how far it goes back. It's just into the front part of the rear section. I don't like making them go much longer than that because, I mean, in my mind, you know, you're you're limiting the the movement on the rear. I don't want anything in in the way whatsoever. Whether it would actually inhibit its movement or not, I don't know. I just a little OCD sometimes. 
but if you want it longer, by all means, go for it. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over, do the last section of dubbing. Now we're gonna do the hot orange up here. Basically about the, the same as we did on the on the back. You definitely want to make sure you got less dubbing on the bottom than you do on the top. Just to kind of help it keel right. And and just for an added benefit on this, and you don't have to depending on what hook you do, I do keel weight these. With about eight wraps of 025 wire. Just to make sure they ride like I want them to. And on the top, the last one, I come in, I actually use on this is Bruiser Blend. Just to veil over the rest of it. I like to that last section to be a little bit longer. And this one's brown olive. If you're wanting to do the uh, fire tire look. Another dark olive looks really good too. Dang. Peel it back. Fold that back. Make sure everything's kind of nice and even. Tie it off behind the eye. And then we'll do a quick, quick finish. Three or four is about all you need, especially if you're gonna seal it off with any kind of UV resin, it's not gonna go anywhere. Nice and tight. And I always like to put my resin on first. I think it just kind of helps, also helps hold the dubbing in place. So when you go to comb them out, you're not ripping it out. Make sure nothing in the eye. through comb it out and here how it's kind of with that much dubbing on it, it it gets kind of a little sticky now if you imagine trying to comb through both of those top sections at the same time it can get a little rough so far to minus some here we put some eyes on it now and you can use I mean everybody has their own own eyes they use for these I mean they're gonna get beat up we got a lot of gar that are in our in some of the creeks that I fish for smallmouth in I mean, they're going to get tore up. I'm not going to put expensive eyes on it. I just use the, the tape eyes. Nothing fancy. Just eat 6,000 to hold them on. Once I kind of think I got them in place, I just lean over, look, make sure everything's good, and just pinch them down in place just for a second. And give you 
a better look. I'm hang it off to the side for a minute, about 10 or 15 minutes. dried for you know, five, 10 minutes, however long it's it's been. You can leave them hanging for whatever. Come back with more soft text. Finish off the head. Some guys like it this way. I mean, I'm not a huge fan. Simply because without this on the nose, it allows that dubbing to move a little more freely than I want it to. At least with just that little bit on the nose, stroke it back a little bit. It'll hold that shape in the head. I mean, you might get a little water push out of it. You know, I haven't really tested that theory out that much, but what it does do is hold that shape. Still allows all this back here to move, but it holds it up here. Won't let it flip back over out of the way. Won't let it crisscross. Won't let it get wrapped around the hook. It does a does a really good job once it's, once it's dried. And that's it. You know, fire tiger, if you want to take, you know, a little marker, mark across the top, we can do that. And then at the end, I'll try to at the end of every streamer video to have a, uh, have a swim video. So you can actually see how they move when they're done. And put pictures up as well. So that's it. That's the smallest shad in a nutshell. She moves.